I thought I'd do an episode on finding our X0, Y0, our X axis and our Y axis. Finding our absolute zero. Hello and welcome to my channel. Today, I thought we'd do another episode of Milling for Beginners. Let's get into that. What we're going to do is look at a couple of different edge finders, real edge finders, and find our absolute zero. I have a few of them here, a few different types. This is my favorite right here, 3H body with a 200 thousandths, I'm not sure what to call it, a probe, or that's the part that you actually touch off with. And it also has a 3 8 inch probe right here that you could touch off with. We're going to call it a probe because I'm not sure what actually the name of it is. This here one is a half inch body with a half inch probe touch off. And this one, this is a really good one. Everybody should have heard of a wiggler. If you've watched my videos, I've used a wiggler many times. But this edge finder has a half inch body, a half inch probe, a 200 thousandths. And on this side, it has the half inch probe touch off and a point that does the same thing a wiggler does. If you're going to buy one, this is probably the one you want to buy. Just make sure your chuck will uh, handle a half inch diameter. A lot of chucks only go up to three eighths of an inch. But anyway, we're going to get into touching off on a part and finding our absolute zero. Let's do that. You know, I still don't think people realize how important it is to indicate our vice jaw, rear vice jaw, straight with our waist. Why it's important to have a stop set every time you go into the mill. You never know when you're gonna take your part out and want to put it back in. Okay, before we go any further, I'd like to say I have my cleaned and stoned parallels in my cleaned vise. The back jaw has been indicated and my stop is clamped to the back jaw. We're going to use this same part we did in the last episode and put this up against the stop. Some people like to pound their stuff down. You don't always have to do that. Make sure it's seated on the parallels, up against the back jaw, and up against the stop. Lock it down. That's what this diagram is. The back jaw, the hard stop, and our part. Let's look at this a little closer. Like I said, this is your back jaw. This is your hard stop, or I call it a dead stop. Right here is a datum point. Your Y axis. And your back jaw, which is your X axis. They both are datums. When they connect, it creates a datum point. That is where your part locates. Why is it important? You want to drill a hole right there. Say it's a half inch and a half inch. And you have multiple parts. Take one out, put one in. Take one out, put one in. 
You want to that to repeat and be accurate. You don't want to have to keep touching off and doing that over and over. Another reason, what if you had side holes? You use the same datum from here and from here. And you could put holes all over. Say there's holes on the side and then there's holes on this side. You don't want to keep touching off. You put it against your datum and you move to those locations. Okay, enough with datums, datum points. You're dead stop in your back vice jaw. Let's go create a datum point in the mill with an edge finder. Let's do that. Okay, the parts in on the parallels up against the jaw and up against the hard stop. I'm going to use my three inch, three eighths inch shank and the 200 thousandths diameter probe touch off tip, whatever you want to call it. There's one thing that you have to remember and that's your RPMs. You need to have your RPMs running between 800 RPMs and 1200 RPMs. I run, this machine is running at, or it's set up for 1000 RPMs. We're gonna do that and we're gonna touch off on this. Let's do that. You should have seen the probe kick out when it centered itself, when it was on the edge. If that was all you had to do, that would be beautiful, but you have to be a little bit more cautious. You have to sneak up, I call it, on that edge. Now that we know it has kicked out, we need to set a zero. After you set your zeros on your dials, if you don't want to lose the position or you're not sure if you can come back to it, you can always do what I do with a piece of masking tape. This is something an old timer showed me. Right on the edge here, or you can put another piece of tape. I use the edge of my saddle here. And I just make a line and place my zero. It's really hard to be off because your zero set on your dial, if you're 100 thousandths off, you can see that. I mean, you're not looking for super accuracy because you have your dial. For the rich guys that have a DRO, hit that zero. Okay, we're gonna move off and we're gonna come up on that really slow. It kicked out at two thousandths. We have to reset our zero. Let me explain what you just saw me do. I brought my X axis towards the part slowly. When it kicked out, when that probe on the end kicked out, I stopped it, I set my first zero. 
I moved the spindle away from the part in my x-axis and brought it up slowly to ten thousandths in front of my zero. Then I brought it to five thousandths in front of my zero. Then I went one thousandth at a time until it kicked out again. And it was two thousandths in front of my zero. I reset my zero. If you're just doing sloppy work, I guess you can just come up on it and just have it kick out. So, now, this edge finder is right on the edge of that part. My probe, or tip, is 200 thousandths in diameter. What we need to do is bring it half that distance. That would be 100 thousandths. On this mill, that's one revolution. Every mill is different. If it's not 100 thousandths per revolution, after you bring it 100 thousandths, you need to reset your zero. For the rich guys, again, you hit your DRO. Okay, now we want to do that again on the back jaw. Let's bring this thing in, say 500 thousandths. One, two, three, four, five. And that's clockwise, looking straight down your axes. Now we're gonna go and do the Y axis. Turn on your spindle, 1000 RPMs. It kicked out, set a zero, back it off, Start your spindle. Ten thousandths away, five thousandths away, and then inch up on it one thousand at a time. When it kicks out, you reset your zero. Bring your spindle up and bring it in half your probe diameter. One hundred thousandths. And we have to bring that spindle back, the x-axis, back to the center. We have backlash on machines. All machines have backlash. Raise your spindle up. We moved off 500 thousandths. One, two, three, four, five. But our backlash was this way. There's 20 thousandths backlash. Move one revolution passed, so that's 600 thousandths, and come back clockwise. Zero. You're on zero, zero. DRO says zero, zero. Your dials say zero, zero. Now you could start moving off to wherever your print says. I hope this all made sense to you. Because if you're serious about making parts accurately, this is what you have to do. Always clean your vise. Always clean your parallel. Always indicate your vise. Always set a stop. So that corner is your absolute zero. That's where everything comes from. Unless you're just winging it. And good luck to you. So... I guess this video is coming to an end, so I'm going to have to say, until next time, enjoy. Enjoy.